Hello, it's Jane here and I'm sitting in a shady glade because to be honest, we've had a really, another really, really hot day. I mean, it is middle of June, but here in the UK, that doesn't guarantee sunny weather, but sunny weather we've had. So to be honest, by this time of day, it's about five o'clock now, the heat has built up to such a level that there's nowhere better for, for me to sit than somewhere nice and shady. I'm not a heat fan. I don't do heat very well. It's nice to look at and, you know, complain about when it's too cold. But um, yeah, so I thought, I thought I'd come and sit in my shady glade and have a little word with you about pollinators. Did you see that? Did you see the robin? He landed on the table. Come on. Oh. Oh, he's on the apple tree now. Are you coming back over? I don't know why I do that. I always go, could be a horse, could be a camel, could be a robin. Oh, he's coming. You might be able to see him. I think he's actually under the table. I don't know if the camera's gone down that far. Mike's just trimmed the grass. And so he's obviously wanting to have a little mooch around, see what bugs he can find. It's distracted me completely. Anyway, yeah. So. Um, today I don't just want to talk about pollinators but I want to talk about planting for pollinators because when you think the whole situation we've all been in now for the last year or however long it's been I give up counting um, I know a lot more people have taken up gardening and there's quite a lot of people have only taken it up for the first time and there's things that I get asked that I, you, you just sort of take for granted that people will know about um, and then you realise, you know, if you look back, I didn't really know about that when I started because gardening, like anything, you, you just get this constant trickle of information and before you know it, it's built up and it, it just becomes your common knowledge. So I thought I'd have a little word about pollinators and yeah, in particular, what to plant to attract them. So. When I talk about pollinate, let's go back to the beginning. When I talk about pollinate, I'm talking about the plant reproducing so that it can continue its journey for the next year. The insect puts its proboscis, that's my bell, that's time's up, the, its proboscis into the flower, collects the pollen, which becomes nectar, and then it feeds on that and also will take it back to the hive, nest, whatever, and feed the other bees, okay? In the meantime, not only is it transforming the pollen into nectar, but it's collecting pollen on like these little things on its legs, but also the, the pollen covers its body. And I've only just recently found this out, talk about things trickling in. Um, Apparently, when a bee goes near a flower, there is some sort of electrostatic charge. I'm not making it up, honestly. It's like when, um, if you rub a balloon against your arm or against something nylon, and then you can stick it on your head. I mean, who hasn't done that? We still do. <laughs> that charge, if you rub it, your hair stick up. That happens to bees when they go near a flower. I cannot explain the science of it. The hairs on the bee stand up and they help to attract the pollen to it. So that bee will become absolutely laden. Can we say hello? No, it's a robin, it doesn't speak. I'm going a bit too far there. Um, what I want to do is to encourage bees and pollinating insects into my polytunnel and into my greenhouse. So. I mean, I've put pollinating plants all over the garden, I'll show you in a minute. But to do that, I'm going to plant some pollinating plants just outside so that the bees will come in and then think, oh, I might have a little look in there while I'm here. Oh, there's some tomatoes, I think I might do a bit of pollinating. And uh, we need to get them as close to the greenhouse as we can. The sorts of plants that your bees, hoverflies, wasps, all your pollinators are going to like are ones where it is easy for them to get the pollen. So, if you think of marigold, your calendula, it's got that lovely, lovely open face, hasn't it? With the pollen really beautifully set out in the middle. So as the bee sees it, 
it goes straight into the center can gather the pollen if you've got something like for example a beautiful beautiful double peony or a damask rose yes the bee can go and collect the pollen from it but it's a lot harder because it's hidden in all the ruffles it's not been grown to um to, uh, basically to help nature out so your bees will like flowers that they can land on get the pollen as quick as possible and then fly off to the next one okay you can have things like calendula you can have things like cosmos you, you can also have things like dahlias but again the dahlias the simpler the dahlia the easier it is for them to see the center and access the pollen annuals are brilliant because I, i'm touching that because that's some of my cosmos here um, because they will last for the whole season once they start flowering i mean they don't look like they're going to flower at all at the minute do they but once they start flowering they're going to flower right through to the frosts so they are great so they will provide bees with pretty much constant source of pollen um, that they can perennials however tend to flower in one particular period so for example here <laughs> that is my time cutting look I've got two and they're actually flowering at the minute and now I'll show you in the garden at the moment what they look like when they're in uh, well I'll show you where I got the cuttings from uh, when they're in full flower and they are great because they're flowering now before any of my annuals have started flowering so that is attracting the bees lavender they absolutely love 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 lavender love lavender another thing to note is they love blue flowers they love purple flowers they love yellow flowers you think if you go into the garden on a sunny day with a yellow in particular a yellow t-shirt on more often than not the hoverflies and etc will make I'm going to say beeline it's not meant to be a pun we'll make a beeline for you okay they're just like yellow i'm not too sure about blue and purple i've never tried that one out but yeah give it a go um so they are particularly attracted to certain colors and so that's why herbs in your garden they're just brilliant for um bees not only do they look beautiful they flower um they smell beautiful we can use them in so many different ways but they're helping the bees out as well but if you think about it most herbs have got purple flowers okay so your perennials will prolong the season in that they might start early flower late your annuals will fill that gap in the middle so have a little think about if you want to put something in your plot if you want to help the pollination okay i'm going to shut up come out of my shady glade and show you some of um, the work that some of my pollinating plants are doing for me already. I think Rocky wants to stay put. There we go. On cue. Lovely little furry enjoying the pollen off the chives and this is what I mean these um chives have been in bloom now for oh at least a couple of weeks I mean they're probably well they are they're just starting to go over now at which point I will chop them down and then um probably up to about a couple of inches down to the ground and then they'll give me a second flush so they will flower again later on in the summer and give the bees another feast and I don't know if you can see just in the background there we've got some self-seeded borage which you can maybe see around there is about to flower as well and that is another favorite plant of the bees so once the chai flowers have gone they can just move inwards and upwards onto the borage And again I've got um, thyme either side of the path here which is another nice early flower to help the bees mm -hmm. 
And as for the golden marjoram, we've got no sign of any flower buds at all yet, but again, they will be flowering, purple flowers, later than the lavender. I mean, it's not like the um, plants can't help themselves. If you look at this strawberry here, it's got this lovely flower. The bees know exactly where to go, right in the middle there, nice and clear. <gasps> There's one there. Um, hop on there, get the pollen, hop onto the next flower. And in doing so, they leave behind a lovely pollinated fruit. You can see each side of the path here, we have got self-seeded calendula. And the reason I have left that is because to me, if there was only one flower I could have at the allotment, it would be the calendula. Because that, when that is in full bloom, I'll try and get a bit of footage to show you, is just spectacular. in the sunshine like a vampire I shrivel when it's too sunny right okay this is one half of the outside the polytunnel doors so as you can see again these funny looking things are self-seeded calendula brilliant I had them in there last year they're gonna stay in I'm gonna put in some cosmos I've got two different sorts bright lights I grew that last year and another unknown one so I might put a mix of them in I've got a hiss up I've never had much luck with that so I don't think I'm going to put that in this time I think I'm going to nurture it until it gets a nice big strong plant and of course I've got my lavender now like I say these were that was from cuttings two years ago that was from a cutting last year they both love to be baked in the sun and they are both absolutely brilliant multi-purpose plants so I'm going to put those in they're a win-win if this patch was completely bare, I'd probably put my thyme in the corner on both sides of the, um, the little path going in so that when you knocked it, you got a nice smell. But to be honest, these calendula have self-seeded so nicely on both sides that I'm going to do it on the other corner. And then that can be, if you like, my permanent feature. I've got thyme down there, I know. Look how hard this soil is. Goodness me, but it shows it gets the sun and it shows it's baked. Um, and it's going to be a lot better than that poor little thing being stuck in that pot. So, I did wash it before, actually, to try and soften it, but it hasn't worked very well. Just as an aside, this is what the soil was like across the whole plot when we took it on. And it's only through the last couple of years of, um, you know, covering it, cardboard, compost, council compost, all that, that we're actually starting to get nice... Um, friable soil in the beds so yeah so this one is going in there it should be watered before it goes in i'm not going to water it i've pulled it out of there look at that i mean it's it's barely alive never mind so nothing to lose let's put it in that won't grow too high it's going to be uh surrounded by marigolds anyway or calendula as we call them so that now i will water it in should fill this area and it'll be there before oh excuse me it'll be there before any of the um annuals have started flowering next year just like the ones we saw down there it should be at that stage well it's flowering now so okay um same again with the lavender that i'm putting at this end i will have to remove a calendula but there's plenty of them Don't tell Jim from the Lake Effect Gardener. He'll get very cross because he would have transplanted that. And really, I should have done it as well, but I haven't. <laughs> right, this again is going to have to 
Oh, go here. Why did I choose a little trowel for a big job? I don't know. I'll come back to you when I've done this. It's like clay, it's like completely different soil altogether. So I'm hoping these plants are going to do okay here. But again, this will fill this corner and provide, if I say year round, it won't be year round for the bees, but a year round focal point. A short, one foot tall focal point. Let's have a look and see. Look at that though. Poor thing. I feel like Eric Morgan. Did he do that a lot? I'm doing it all the time. Right, okay. Always be, try and be careful. If they've been completely root bound like this, just break them away gently. More often than not, you'll find a couple of happy little snails. Yeah, I think that's ready to move on. Okay. I'm going to put that there. I will come back to that because clearly I need to get a bigger spade and do it properly. But just to give you an idea of what I'm going to do now, I am going to take a couple of these Cosmos just pop them in. I mean it does, you know, does make you realise how good it is to have half decent soil. That's another thing for new gardeners. If you've got good soil you'll get good growth. What that says about these poor little things I don't know. So I'm gonna make, you can see I've left this foxglove here. Once that goes to seed, not foxglove, forget me not. Once that goes to seed I will take it up because it does seed everywhere but it's just been lovely. Uh, let's make another little hole and then I'm going to put my cosmos in and I think I'll come back to you when it's done. Okay here we go, we've got thyme down here, we've got lavender there, that will fill in and create as I say like a perennial little border and will provide flowers early on and then in between We've got the volunteer calendula and the cosmos, um, which should grow to a nice height. So if you are considering, if you've got a new garden or you're new to growing vegetables, as well as thinking about your vegetables, think about what you can plant next to them that your pollinators are going to love, because in the end, it will pay you back in kind. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, all the links are below. So come along to Facebook, come along to Instagram, come and say hello. Please subscribe if you like the video and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now.